Oliver, we made it. It's season three of First Class Counselors. Woo! That's right. We did it. We're starting off with a good one, too. Something that is practical and relevant for camp counselors today. That's right. We are going to be talking about back to school and how camp can help with that tough transition. And since we're old, we brought in someone who's actually experiencing it right now. They're on the front lines of this transition. Tune into this episode to meet our guest. Here's some pro tips on using your camp skills to help with back to school and even learn a song about a dinosaur along the way. This is First Class Counselors. Hello camp pros, this is Oliver Gregan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a summer camp professional. And my name is Matt Hansberger. My pronouns are also he, him, and I'm the executive producer of podcasting at Go Camp Pro. And welcome to season three of First Class Counselors. This series is for camp directors to give to their counselors as they hire and prepare them for the upcoming summer. And as we've said for two seasons, and we will say for many more seasons, great camp directors know that counselors have the most important job at camp. Their abilities can make or break a camper's week, and they hold the keys to a camper coming back year after year. So thanks for tuning in. Here we're going to cover one specific topic and cover the essentials as fast as we can. It's the need to knows. The can't go without. The fundamentals. The basics. So what are we talking about today? The only thing on everyone's mind, COVID-19. And pun intended, it's an infectious topic and one that has affected so many. Matt and I <laughs> will be talking about how it affected us, but we also wanted to serve our show's purpose, and that is to give the counselors perspective. What was it like during the summer and what's it like now going back to school? To help us with that, we have a special guest who will be walking us through his experience this summer as a counselor and what it's like back at school for him. We wanted to make sure that we took the time to say something about COVID affecting camp. You know, it is just about the stories of those who have been a part of it. I think as young camp leaders who may not have been involved in some of the big decisions being made in such a difficult time, it can be tough. Some camps had COVID hanging over their head, wondering each day if it was going to be safe or if today was the day an infection was going to turn up. Others had some weird camp, but not camp, kind of family camp, maybe some other version of outdoor recreation that was not what they've done in the past. Others worked virtual camp and in some way making videos, going live and working each day to give a creative and fun experience to children in an online environment that I could only contemplate was kind of abnormal. Finally, others contended with the loss of camp altogether. The thing that they care so much about just kind of taken from them. And now they're spending their summer at home or working a job with that thought in the back of their head of this isn't camp. No matter the experience, you are a young professional who is going to do great things. And we want you to know that. So today, listen in, hear from others, and hopefully we can all walk away more hopeful for the future. Now, here's our plot for today. What is life like from camp to school? For those counselors who are transitioning back, it is certainly different. There are protocols, new practices, and people, lots of new people in a time where new people is kind of scary. We are here to see if we can find out more about these changes and if camp has helped in the long run. So thank you for tuning in and let's get started. So right now, let's get started with our own stories. Matt, can you tell us what your summer was like? Yeah, like a giant blur is essentially, no. I mean, yes, but also, um, so I had, I had chosen to leave my camp job in October prior to the, uh, to the pandemic really kicking off. And, um, you know, which, which was interesting in a way because I didn't really, you know, I made the choice and then I didn't have the choice to be at camp. Um, so I definitely feel for those people who were like ready to go for another year and it got taken away from. Um, but I'm really fortunate to be um, with the Go Camp Pro team and with Travis kind of at the helm. When I remember sitting in a hotel room when I was at ACA Tri State, um, and I remember seeing um, the news alert that the NBA had canceled their season. And then Travis sent me an email and he's like, we got to get started. And that's how the COVID-19 Slack group started and how the camp industry um, started collaborating to get through this summer. Um, and whether camps ran or didn't run or did virtual, um, we were uh, writing newsletters and we were um, 
sharing resources and helping camps pivot, whether it was, we ran some virtual teaching programs. And so I was, I was definitely busy volunteering and working. Um, it wasn't summer camp, but I was uh, getting an interesting insider's look into how the industry um, worked. And, and for your camp counselors, for our camp counselor listeners out there, I want you to know how hard your directors worked. Um, this was an off season from March to May camp usually gets busy for directors, but this was like no other. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're listening, send your director a quick note, just thanking them for how hard they have likely worked um, for this year. Cause that's what I got to see this summer. Oliver, what about you? Yeah, I think you brought up Tri-State and that, that was such a big turning point for so many camps, right? Cause so many people were at ACA Tri-State when the NBA canceled and that was kind of when everybody, it, you know, every camp professional I can think of standing around was just like, whoa, things just changed. And yeah. that turning point, you know, you're surrounded by a 2000 other camp professionals who are like, what does this mean for camp right now? And even at the conference, they had started talking about it. Uh, my, my experience was for really easy, difficult. Uh, you know, I am definitely someone who identifies camp as a fundamental part of who I am as a person and to keep my story you know right off of the, to cut it kind of right the head is I have been laid off because there was no summer camp so I am no longer a summer camp director as far as the employment goes I am still 100% mentally in my head thinking about summer camp every single day and how to run it in 2021 that hasn't gone away I think it's just kind of part of you at a certain point yeah. uh, but that process was immensely difficult because from that turning point, you know, in early March leading up, there were so many questions, you know, how are we going to run summer camp? You know, what is it going to look like this year? What do we need? You know, we are talking about personal protection equipment, but also how to run programming. There's so many different alternative plans that you're putting forward in your brain and thinking about it just doesn't stop. So not only are you planning camp to run camp, you're also just planning to what does camp look like with COVID? It's a completely different story. And the stress was absolutely immense. And just trying to connect with other camp professionals, there were some things that we had done that we had never done before. You know, I was really happy that I was part of a Connecticut camp directors calls, right? Where other camps in Connecticut with the YMCA were all connecting with each other and saying, hey, what are you doing at this point? And, you know, that started with Connecticut, but we added people from Massachusetts. We added people from, I think, New York and New Jersey at certain points. And it was just so amazing to see our, you know, family of camp professionals coming together. And we had to weigh so many things, you know, before we ended up canceling camp for summer 2021, uh, summer 2020, you know, we thought about doing family camps. We thought about doing outdoor recreation. We thought about doing virtual camp. We thought about all these things. And at the end of the day, you know, it just wasn't something that my camp could do. And mm -hmm. when that decision was made, the next, you kind of have to look at two routes. One is you kind of stagger your way or two is you make the necessary cuts in your budget so you can be ready for summer 2021. And unfortunately, no summer camp means no summer camp director. So I am currently not employed. I'm looking for a camp that would get to be my home for wherever I work next, but I'm happy that I got to work so hard and trying to find a way to make camp possible. For me, that was one of the most important things I can do. And I can accept that failure knowing that everything that could be done, I felt like I did. And that was, that's kind of what makes me happy. For other camp pros, I can connect with you on the fact that there's so much that you may have felt like you've lost. Uh, and in reality, that felt is in actuality, you may have actually lost stuff now. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, if, if there's any camp professional out there who listens to our podcast, who needs someone to talk to about that loss and that feeling, contact me. We put it in every single show notes on how to get a hold of us. If you have questions, if you just want to vent about something, please reach out. I know how important it is to have another camp professional to talk to. Sometimes somebody who's not affiliated with your organization. And I also just love connecting with people and talking camp. So please reach out. I'm here. I want to listen. I want to learn. I want to be a part of your experience in any way that I can help. So thank you so much. Um, but Matt, 
let's get right to our episode. Let's talk about the things that we can talk about and the things that we can do now. Yeah, I, I want to just before we do that, Oliver, I want to hold some space and just say thanks for sharing. And I'm I'm so sorry, man. Um, we've become friends over two full seasons of, of the podcast, and I know um, deep down, you know, I find you a good friend because we both love camp so much, um, and I know that it means a lot to you. So I'm really sorry, but I'm I'm really grateful that you are taking this in stride, and the um, you have said okay. I can't do anything about this, but I'm going to move forward and I want to be the best that I can. And if there's any executive directors out there listening that are looking for a camp director, I can't think of a better person um, than my friend Oliver. So uh, this, this episode, Oliver, let's treat it as just a working job interview for you. Or maybe in a future episode, it'll be like, get to know Oliver. <laughs> we'll go through your resume. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it. An Oliver resume episode. But I mean, honestly, like right now, having this podcast and having ways to connect back to camp and still serve the camp community is huge for me. And I just really enjoy being a part of it. And, uh, you know, here we go. Season three. Yeah, man. Yeah. So on that note of moving forward, um, a lot of counselors right now are in the midst of back to school. We're recording this in late September and of uh, 2020, and it's back to school time. And we thought this was an appropriate time not only to cover um, what back to school looks like every year and how hard that can be, but also we can't address, we can't not address the elephant in the room that is back to school in COVID times. And uh, to do that, Oliver and I aren't necessarily the best people because we, we're, we're camp people. We're not in school anymore. And um, so we brought in someone who is in school. So uh, in a second, we're going to pivot over and welcome Thomas Dewar, or his camp name is Evro. Evro was actually a camper when I was a staff member at Cairn. Um, and I'm really happy that he agreed to join us to share his perspective. Um, and he's got some awesome stories. So I'm excited to welcome him to the podcast. Anything before we jump in, Oliver? No, let's zip right to it. Boom. All right. Oliver, we are here to interview our good friend, Thomas Dewar. His camp name is Evro, uh, and him and I work together. So you might hear some Evro instead of Thomas, and you might hear some Iskis instead of Matt, and you might hear some Oliver. Well, you'll hear Oliver. We're working on the camp name for Oliver. Uh, so Evro, thanks for being here, man. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So Evro is our, uh, our expert today on what it's like to go back to school after camp and not just back to school, but back to school in a global pandemic. So uh, Evro, thanks for holding tough and we're excited to hear your expert opinion or your, your experiences on this. Yeah, I'm excited to share my experiences as well. Okay, so uh, we're trying something new on the podcast this year with our guests, Evro. We're going to do some quick fire questions just to help people get to know you and also get to the content as fast as possible. So listeners, this is for you, but also let's uh, find out some quick things about Thomas. Ready, Thomas? Here we go. What camp are you associated with? I'm with the Karen family of camps. Awesome. Where are you from? I'm from Brampton, Ontario in and Canada. What's, yeah, and what school are you at right now? I'm at the University of Western. Awesome. What's your favorite camp meal? Uh, favorite camp meal would have to be chicken burgers. Nice. What's your favorite camp song? Favorite camp song would be the dinosaur song. Oh, okay. That might be a good one to do at the end, eh, Oliver, to find out more about that. And lastly, your favorite, favorite camp smell? Oh, favorite camp smell is uh, the lake, the ocean breeze. Nice. Love it. All right. Well, Thomas, it's good to get to know you. I am meeting for the first time today, which is phenomenal. But also, I'm excited to kind of hear about your experience of that transition from your camp life to your school life now that you're in. So can you just start off? We'll start at the very beginning. What was the meaning of camp and COVID for you this summer? You know, coming into it, not knowing what to expect, you know, directors and such are making decisions, but you're really going to be one of the ones who's running with what it's going to be. So how did it play out for you? And what were your feelings, you know, at the very beginning and then as you work through it? At the, at the very beginning, it was like all new. It was, it was very different for us and how we um, were approaching uh, working at camp through COVID um, virtually, but um it was it was a fun task to to learn and to to know how to uh, f to 
figure out. Um, yeah, I think overall it was it was really fun from the beginning to the end. Um, I did a bunch of like theme uh, coordination, and so um, that was making theme videos uh, by myself and with other staff members when we could, and producing those and and bringing them out each day. Um, and that was that was a fun little little thing that happened. So, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about those videos that you produced? Because you know some of them, you know, you're doing camp, but you know if you're sitting there at an editing table, right? You're inside working on camp things. You know, you so some of your videos may get outside, but what's that difference like where that interaction isn't happening, but you're kind of doing everything behind the scenes and just kind of hoping it works? Yeah we we had a bit of the 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 hope and pray that the children would like um uh, enjoy it and 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 really um and really see it through uh to the end and we we got a lot of feedback back from that when we um cuz we also did campfire uh virtually as with uh, within the theme uh coordinator uh job and so from the beginning of the day we would send out those videos and and we would hope that they enjoyed them and then back at campfire we would um, get to see some reactions about them and talk about it there and so we could see it through each day and uh, see how that goes throughout the whole week that we ran so was there a project that you produced this summer that really stood out just one that just went exceptionally well um one that went uh almost perfectly in my books uh was our actually our week one uh theme and uh we did a like a like a covid olympics-esque thing where it was it was all like the the olympics that you wouldn't really see so we did like um tea towel racing where you race along uh the the like tiles in your house and and see like the fastest you can get from point a and point b <laughs> Uh, we also did um, golf ball curling, and it was like bocce ball where you're trying to get into the center, but you it was all a golf ball, and it was it was it was a fun one. Um, we also did um, pen balancing, where you put a pen and you try and keep it and do some tricks, uh, which was really fun. And so it was little like weird things that we could think of, but um, it worked out in the end. It was really fun to make and see how the uh, kids reacted to it so was the exhaustion level the same for you i know with camp you know we go from the moment we wake up to the moment we get woken up in the middle of the night so when that's taken away what's life for you doing a virtual camp versus you know actually having camp was you know were you tired every day or stressed or what was it, like? it was yeah it was a bit tiring at points um but it was nice that we had times where we were just off and and had a break. But most of the time we were we were doing things um, that kept us engaged. So it was it it was like a a, a wonder of both worlds where uh, we got time off when we needed it um, throughout the day. But we were also working on our own personal tasks. So it was nice and nice in both ways. Right, and Thomas, you are, you have some overnight, like overnight camp is your background and experience. It sounds like you had a bit of like the day camp experience in that too, where you're, you're on sometimes and then you're off seeing your friends, um, kind of like that too. So that's a, a, a nice perspective shift. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big change for me, um, being on 24-7 kind of thing um, throughout the days, uh, like in person and at like uh, overnight camp, but it felt very day camp like um, doing it virtually. So it was a bit yeah. of a difference, but it was, it was a good one. Yeah, that's awesome. So along the same lines of, of you know, difference and, and being okay with transition, um, the, this episode, we're really talking about back to school. And in any other year, we would ask you the question, we would start to talk about back to school in, a regular time, but this time is far from regular. So knowing, you know, camp was ending in August or, you know, late July, August, and you were heading back to school with COVID being a part of it, where was your head at in that transition? Um, it was a bit of a scary transition for me, I'd say. Um, but one that I was willing to like, 
overcome i'd say uh it was it was since working throughout the summer um virtually i knew what i was expecting coming into school and uh, for western at least it they had everything in place by the time that we were um, getting ready and and going so we had all of our procedures and everything that we had to follow and um but yeah going from camp virtual to school virtual it felt really uh easy so now oh, interesting so the camp skills they, they kind of or the the environment matched up between the two yeah it, it matched up pretty well so and you said that it, things were kind of communicated clearly and procedures were were in place um tell me how how did that preparation how did that translate into how it's going this year like is it as as structured as they said it would be it's it's pretty structured to to matching what their procedures um that they produced um with a few changes um that they've made that like just need to happen um right but overall it's been pretty much the same that they had in place before september so thomas are there any changes that uh are exceptionally strange to get used to there there are a few um so the program i'm in is a music program at western and so we have a bunch of um like we play in ensembles and such um but we can't be in ensemble for more than 30 minutes because of like we have to air out the room so there's that change um and a lot of my courses that I would normally take in person are online. And so there's that and different, thing, different things like that, so. I can only imagine I was a, a music student as well. And like uh, just talking to you before this and, and, and other times, it's just like everything has to be rethought and how you're doing it. And I think that takes a lot of like resilience coming from you, which, which seems like we've talked about resilience here on the podcast about a skill of, you know, all-star or as we call them first class counselors. So how has, how has camp helped you in the transition of going back to school in times like this? I think um, camp really shows you how to, it knows how to like connect people without needing the connection piece. If that makes sense, I'll explain in, my weird way um yeah yeah so i think camp is a really great way to connect people in the first place because you have that common interest of just being at camp and then when you go to school um you can create those connections by finding that one percent uh and then growing on that but through covid it's been harder to do that in person and so i think through our virtual classes and all of that we found it really easy to like like in um our virtual software, we can like chat in the chat box and, and talk to people there, which um, we've done in like my music history course. And we talk then like you would do in class and like have discussions and such. And so I think it's been a, an easy way to like learn from camp that, you know, connection is possible and finding that 1% and still being able to do that at school. So. I like that. And so you talked a bit about, you know, in the, in COVID times, you've had to adapt in that way. What about like in a regular year? But I remember back to school always being like a bit of a bummer because you're riding that high from summer camp and then you're going back to school, which, which you might have good connections at home and stuff. What in any other year or even in this year, what are some other skills that like camp has given you to manage that transition or to succeed when you're back in the, the quote unquote real world? Yeah, I think, um, for me at least I learn a lot of people skills when I'm at camp and how to like interact with people um and like I think making those like again making connections is is one thing that camp teaches you a lot about and so uh, bringing that to school when you're in whatever um even in person is is hard sometimes when you're going yeah. from say going from high school into university, it's, it's hard to make that transition. And I, I did that last year. And so, um, yeah, making connections was a big thing that I learned from last year working at camp um, and going forward, so. 
Thomas, what has the conversation with your friends been who may not have had camp before in their lives? Uh, you know, that kind of, what's the vibe on the college campus of, you know, what other students are saying about, you know, life at school with COVID? Yeah, a lot of people um, that I know are, are worried about it um, and a little nervous about COVID in general and how the school's um, taking it. And um, I think like Western is doing great uh, so far. Um, but I think to, to like keep them, to keep that conversation going um, because it's a conversation that needs to happen about COVID in general. Um, but yeah, most people that I've talked to that don't have a camp background um, are adapting to it uh, well, but a little slower. I think as camp people, we adapt really well um, and that we are able to make these changes um, that we, we see every day, even at like camp. Okay. So for yourself moving forward, are you thinking of your, your future and kind of a day by day, you know, is tomorrow the day that there's a positive test on camp this and we got to kind of deal with this or is it week to week? Or are you kind of, you know, this is my semester. I know what's going to happen here. You know, what I, you know, a lot of people this past summer security of time was a huge thing of like, how long can I think ahead for what, where's your brain at right now? So I, I think for me, I'm at like a, a in between a day by day and a week by week kind of thing. Um, it's, it's been a bit weird. To, like I have to think day by day to like see for school wise, what's due or like week by week, what's due like the next week and that I have to start working on. But, um, COVID wise, it's definitely day by day to like see what's going on and, and to know, um, and to think of like where you've been and such, but, um, yeah, I think I'm in between a day by day and a week by week. So. Yeah, and you really gotta. I think what you're saying is like taking it as it comes and being ready, ready to process new information because everything's changing so fast, which is like definitely camp, right? Mm -hmm. Everything changes. You've got this like amazing thing planned out, and then the rain comes, and you've you're still responsible for those kids, and you still got to make it magical. So um, that like resilience, adaptability, um, all those things. I think it sounds like that's what's really helping you get through this tough time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Being able to like already like change things on a dime from camp and like knowing that aspect and then coming to school and like finding out different things like, Oh, we're changing that now. I'm like, okay, sick. We'll, we'll keep going forward. Then. <laughs> we'll just, it's fine. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here, uh, Thomas, but what to finish off, if there was a person um, in your situation right now, they're back at school, whether it's uh, university, college, or high school, and you know they're struggling, but they're a camp person. They know, they speak our language, they, they understand what that looks like. What piece of advice would you give them um, for how they can find success during this wild, wild time? I think um, the one main thing is that, uh, which struggled for me at the beginning of this, was that change is okay change isn't going to hurt you, change is okay. And being able to learn from that change and um, being able to grow from it is probably the best thing that you can do. So yeah, just to know that, you know, change is, change is a good thing. Yeah. Change is just change. It's how we respond to it that, that can really um, define who we are, how we view the situation. So I think yeah. that's, that's super smart. Oliver, any more questions for our good friend, Thomas? Oh, a thousand. Um, <laughs> I could, I could have him on, on here all night and just kind of go through the million questions well, that I do have. Uh, yeah. We'll get him but back for some, mini, so we'll, get him time, for some yeah. uh, we'll get him back for some mini pods. For sure. Yeah. Well, Thomas, thanks a lot, man. Uh, we, before we let you go, we do this segment at the end of our podcast called Eggle, which is ever growing, ever learning. Um, and could you drop us uh, a quick section of the dinosaur song so that uh, other people can either pick it up or uh, go from there? We might have to get the extended version from you for our show notes, but uh, I would love to hear a piece of it if you're willing. Yeah, I can. 
Um, so it's a repeat after me song, uh, which is okay, we great. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, I'll just do one of the verses, I guess. <laughs> okay, Oliver, I'm going to make Oliver do the repeat because you can't repeat two people. Oliver, you're in. Do it. <laughs> My name is Barontosaurus. My name is Barontosaurus. I'm the long neck dinosaur. I'm the long neck dinosaur. And on my neck I have a head. And on my neck I have a head. And my tail goes to the floor. And my tail goes to the floor. When the other dinosaurs want to fight. When the other dinosaurs want to fight. I swing my head with all my might. I swing my head with all my might. So there's there's just one verse of it, but I'll send you the rest. <laughs> and is it like all the dinosaurs are battling? Is that the essential? Yeah, verse? I'd say I'd say it's a big um, brawl between the dinosaurs, and it has a nice little ending. So. Uh, oh, nice. Okay. Well, uh, stay tuned to our show notes. Uh, eventually, we'll get that one from uh, from Thomas. So, thanks so much, Thomas. That's great, man. It was great to see you, um, and I look forward to hearing some more uh, stories about how you're doing and some lessons you've learned from camp. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, see you all again soon. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for your time tonight, Thomas. Thank you as well. <laughs> cool. See you later, buddy. See ya. All right, Oliver, great interview. Great way to start off uh, season three of First Class Counselors. Um, what, what did Thomas say that resonated with you during that chat? Uh, I really liked talking to him about the programming aspect of it all. You know, the fact that they were doing virtual, you know, obviously he's gone through the whole season of it. He's, he's done it and he's a lot calmer now about it. But I can only imagine how strange that is for somebody who is so used to being with people for camp to now kind of putting that video together and just sending it out there. And uh, it is amazing that he, you know, he talked about that first week being really successful uh, and then you know, following through with the rest of it all. But it, it's just interesting to see that he was still able to provide that camp experience, however strange it might have been. Yeah, for sure. Like, did you see his professional microphone setup? The dude is a pro. Like, <laughs> much better than our like earbuds and headsets. Some days, so that was that was pretty cool to see. And he was just like adaptable. That's what I got from it. He and and it reminded me of how adaptable um, camp people are in general. I said it during the interview, but like, that's just what he had to do because and again it goes back to that like what's the point of it it was to make the campers lives happy so he was doing theme stuff because it was interesting and exciting and it wasn't just like tune into a virtual program and then we'll try and do these like repeat after me songs that only kind of work he they they went that extra mile to make it awesome and magical which i think that's like a first class counselor sign if i have ever seen one for sure yeah. After listening to Thomas, my question for you is what advice do you have coming from that for a staff member, you know, who is in school right now? Yeah, I really like the piece of advice he, he gave about, um, the, about change. And I think that's really great. And, and accepting that change. Um, I talked a lot about at the, at the start of COVID when people are asking me, I was like, well, I can control some things and I can't control other things. And I'm going to focus on the things that I can control. And what you can control, especially if you're going back to school, is um, I'll give you two pieces of advice. And one is to look for the camp people in any year, whether it's, a, whether it's COVID or not, find other camp people. Um, I often say that camp people are the best people in the world, which I know is like a little bit snobby, but I, I truly believe it. So if you are able to look and find those people, you're going to make really close and fast connections with them. And the last thing I would say is just because, you know, if you're watching the news, uh, you know, I, I am really disappointed when I hear about people doing those like large gatherings with no masks and they're not social distancing. And, you know, we're recording this in late September and right now, you know, there's talks of the second wave going on and it's just, I think we just need to be diligent. And I think that camp people are really good at following rules and restrictions. I would, I would like my non-scientific brain says that I bet you like 96% of those people in those gatherings aren't camp people. Again, that's me being a total snob, 
but um, I think just leading by example and having the courage to follow those restrictions, even if some of your other friends, um, whether they're camp friends or not, decide to kind of shirk those responsibilities, step up and lead by example because, um, you know, I often say that the world would be a little bit better if camp people r ruled the world. Um, and so I think just stepping up and being a leader during this time is really important. Yeah, I couldn't go off of a more different, I can, couldn't pick a different path. I really do think right now, you know, as a camp person, you're a leader and you're typically seen as a pretty decent human being. So, you know, when you're doing the right thing, I think role modeling for others, hey, we need to follow these rules. We need to follow these restrictions that have been put in place so that it's good for all of us. You know, we're not just doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for everyone around us, you know, and the people that are around them, right? Uh, you know, a lot of camp professionals, we're young people. And we may not be sick, but, you know, the people who we do care about who might be a little bit older or maybe at risk, those are the people that you're still following these rules for. And trust us. We know it can be exhausting. We know that it's been way too long of quarantining yourself or wearing a mask or doing all these things. As a camp leader, it's just, you know, it's that, that end of the summer push where you really just got to think, I still got to do what I need to do to make sure that everyone's going to be okay. Yeah. I really like, there was like a social media campaign going on, put on by a bunch of camp people that was like, stay home so we can go home and home being camp. And I thought that was really cool. You know, the, um, it's not, we're not far off from one year into the pandemic, like March, February, March, isn't that far away. And you know, if we're not in a better place than we were then, who knows that the summer 2021 you know, that's in danger if we don't do the best that we can right now. And I don't mean to be alarmist, but that's just the reality of the situation, right? Yeah, I mean, when you're a camp person, and I know like myself, I'm looking up, you know, how to make vaccine on Google, just because <laughs> if, if it's been this long, maybe I can find a way, you know, add one more person to that pile who's just like, maybe I can solve this algorithm or problem. <laughs> and I can save camp for everyone. It, man, that's just you know, if you're that mentality right now, trust me, come join the party. We'll start working on it together. Uh, Thank even you. though I have zero scientific background other than cool science experience with kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about talking about that going to back to camp though, real quick, Matt, there's so much uncertainty there. You know, when you're thinking about going back to camp next year, what's really in your brain for, you know, between now, we're, you said we're in September till, you know, we're kicking off summer in June or uh, July next year. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I would say it, it starts with a, like, you don't know. And your camp director probably doesn't know at this point because it's not really up to them. You know, if it was, if it were up to them, we'd be doing, we'd be doing camp, but there's other factors, right? Like, you know, the budget and uh, the responsibility of safety to the camp community and to your local community. There's a lot of unknowns that we won't really know until um, as the year goes on. What I do know for sure is that especially if your camp didn't run in 2020, your camp is going to need amazing staff members in 2021. Losing a year means that you have to, you're not starting from scratch, but you're a little rusty, right? Even after a, 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 an off season, when you come back to camp, you're a little rusty. It's going to be that times two at least. Right, so they're gonna need you. If you feel like you're a great staff member and you have the ability to go back to camp, I know financially it might be hard, but your camp definitely, definitely needs you. Um, so if you are able to, I would strongly consider going back or you know, you could work at a different camp. If your camp doesn't run in 2021 and you feel like you have great skills, there's kids out there that need you to pass on those great skills. So um, if you can go back, please do go back and be that awesome first class counselor at your camp. Yeah, for me, I'm going to hit on two things. One is keep hope alive, right? Like your camp people are some of the best hopers I've ever met. Uh, mm. You know, there, there's no doubt that uh, we can keep that positivity that summer is going to be coming back in 2021. And then the next thing, you know, Matt kind of hit a big part there was, you know, the budget and all these questions about camp being able to operate. If you have the financial ability to do so, reach out to your camp and camps, think about ways to do this, but how can you volunteer? How can you start helping out on, in a way that it may be an hour, you know, a month, 
you know, even out of very little, can I head up and can I, you know, fix some trail work or do something that I can help camp get ready for summer 2021 or whatever is going to happen in the future. Uh, because I do care about this industry. I do care about my camp. You know, how do you start saying, all right, sometimes it takes a little bit more hands on deck than are being called for. So call up your camp and say, Hey, how can I volunteer? How can I help out? Um, to help. That's really all it is. Oh, you that's really good. I like that a lot, right? If you can go up and I know camps might not be able to take people overnight. So if you can like get an Airbnb or a hotel room or something like that close by and go for like a whole weekend and like paint a cabin in a weekend or do whatever your camp needs. I think that's brilliant. That's so smart, Oliver. Oh man. And get a bunch of friends together. Like you're even sparking me. Get that Airbnb with a bunch of camp friends and, you know, spend, you know, half the day or a day working at camp. And then, you know, the rest of the day hanging out with your friends and, just getting to see some of your camp friends you haven't seen in the past, as long as you're social distancing and doing things you need to do, or maybe doing yeah. it with some of your college friends who you're, you know, you've been in kind of quarantine with, who would be willing to come and help something that matters to you. And you maybe can go and help something that matters to them too. And kind of do that trade. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Matt, do you want to hit our eggle right now? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's eggle time, buddy. So uh, we are bringing in this new concept as this is the first episode of season three. We are, um, we hope that you have gotten ready by now with all the get readies from last, the last two seasons. We're going to try something new. We want to give you the skills uh, that you can apply when you get to camp right away. So it's going to be a game, a tip, a song, uh, something that you can do to build your arsenal of awesome tricks uh so every episode Oliver and i are going to give you a short little bit of something that you'll be able to take and apply the next summer you're working at camp um and oliver uh why don't you start us off yeah i am going with a very simple one you know when you go to camp you get camp mail sometimes you send camp mail and it's really easy for my advice to just be something as simple as send a friend a letter and make it campy i you know i think that's really important but uh, I also took some time to be practical and I added into our show notes, which you can go and check out later, that may give some opening lines or some funny lines you can put in that letter that you sent to your friend right off the bat. The first one is, a podcast I listened to told me to do this. Uh, I wanted to let you know I wanted to hang out more often. I found this restaurant that is a nice place to meet up between the two of us. Uh, I always wanted to skydive, but I kind of need you, buddy. Uh, if school sucks, send me a letter back and I will rescue you when you least need it. Here is a list of transcribed pickup lines so you can make new friends. I know you are lost without me. <laughs> I am not desperate, but I did write this by hand, find an envelope, relearn how to address a letter, purchase a stamp, and drop this in a mailbox to talk to you when I could have just sent a text. And those are just a few ways that you, or a few things that you can say to a friend who may be a little far away that you miss a little bit that's from camp. So, uh, and also this is a little trick. If you don't know their address, uh, what you can do is perhaps send the letter to camp who will probably have their address on file and then they can forward it on as long as you were super nice to the office workers last summer. Yeah, maybe slip in like a couple dollar bills or uh, some loonies and toonies and they can, that'll pay for postage too. I like that. Very cool. And I think that that's an eggle, especially because you're starting to grow your connections and that helps when you're at camp and you're really busy. And if you could get a wicked letter while you're at camp, I think that would be an awesome boost. That's great. Okay. My first eggle of season three is a game and this game works virtually or it works in person. And um, you've been dealing with my scratchy voice today because I've been doing team building, like socially distanced team building with kids at a, a private school here in Ontario. And uh, this is a game I played with them totally at a distance. It was awesome. So you line up across from your partner or I'm looking at Oliver on my zoom screen right now and you take 30 seconds and you memorize what that person looks like. So if I'm looking at Oliver, I can see he's got his glasses on. He's got his earbuds and the right earphone with the microphone is plugged in there. His hair is styled in a certain way. His collar is popped in a certain way. What would then happen is um, in real life, you turn around or on Zoom, you can like turn your camera off. And in that time, you change three things about you. 
and it can be as <laughs> Oliver's doing it for you uh, viewers on YouTube out there, Oliver's doing it right now, and I didn't prepare for this, so this will be a live reenactment of how good or bad I am at this game. But Oliver's changing three things right now, and then when he turns back around, then I will have to figure out what he's changed. <laughs> and he made it easy on me, and he flipped his glasses upside down. Did you do more than that? Oh, yeah, you put your collar down as well. And I think you changed the position of your laptop, or is there like a sign in the background or something? Uh-oh. Oh, you flipped your hair direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not too shabby. So that is Change Through Things. That's a, um, I believe that Jim Kane was the original uh, creator of Change Through Things. Um, so thanks, Jim, for that. And that is my eggle for you to wrap up this episode of First Class Counselors. All right. And thanks so much for listening, my friends. Uh, we love doing these episodes. So please, if you enjoyed today's episode, we'd be so grateful if you left us a review wherever you are listening to this podcast. Your ratings and reviews not only tell us what you like and don't like about the show, but it helps boost our rankings and helps more people discover the show. Also, don't forget that you can find all of our show notes at camphacker.tv slash FCC or gocamp.pro slash FCC. And you can find out how to get in touch with Oliver and I if you have any follow-up questions. Um, and you can also check out Thomas's uh, dinosaur song that he's going to send to us. Uh, and we'll post it up there for you as well. Thanks for listening, friends. And remember, camp is camp and camp's all good. <laughs>